Mr. Welcome. I'm sitting here on our new Hughes Red Fisher 18, redesigned for 2021. And this boat has been the most popular Hughes for a long, long time. And the reason being is that it's so versatile. And so we've taken a lot of things that have made it popular. We haven't changed the hull at all on the boat. I'll get into more about that later. But we've made some great enhancements to the boat, and, but we haven't taken away that versatility. So if you'll spend a few minutes with me, I wanna walk you through the whole boat. So a lot of the versatility about this co boat comes from its size. It's big enough to what I say, you know, call roam, meaning that you can cover a lot of water. Um, the boat comes optioned with either a 115 or a 150. Uh, those are big enough engine packages to get a lot of speed, cover a lot of range. Uh, it's 1810 long, so it's long enough to really take some chop and span some waves. So it's a great open, open water running boat. And then it's 711 wide, which is a really nice and wide beam. Okay, that means that boat is going to be very stable. It's not going to pitch around a lot. So it's really good at fishing passes or jetties or places where you have a lot of water flow and chop and that kind of stuff. But the boat is not too big where you can easily pull it. Uh, the draft is about anywhere from 10 to 11 inches, somewhere in there, depending on how you have it loaded. Uh, it's light, okay? And so it's easy to pull in that regard, especially when you have the 115 on there. One of the enhancements we've made is now the boat is completely built using our Varus construction system. That's vacuum assisted resin infusion system. And what we're able to do with that system, we've been using that on the Mavericks for a really, really long time. And what we can do with that system is we can make those laminates really strong, but keep them nice and, and um, very stiff. So that allows us to pull some weight out and keep that same strength, but drop some weight. So the boat's only gotten lighter with that Varus. It's only gotten stronger. The Hughes are known for being very solid, well-constructed boats. Obviously, that's still all part of, of this new boat, but we just enhanced it even with that new Varus technology. So as I walk around the boat, notice how stable it is. Obviously, that's a great thing when you're fishing in big inlets and passes and that kind of stuff, so you're not rocking a whole bunch. Also, it's great when you have somebody polling and they make a quick move on the pole, they're not gonna throw the guy off on the, the deck. So I'm gonna get up here on the bow, Notice how big an area this is. You can easily fish two people up here, no problem. So you can do your trolling motor style fishing very easily. Speaking of trolling motors, the boat comes with trolling motor wiring standard up front. That's 24 volt system. And included with that is a plate underneath the deck. Uh, and that's laminated in and so that you can drill and tap a trolling motor after the fact if you want. We option the boat out, or do a factory option with the motor guide trolling motors, the iPilots. Like I said, that's a 24 volt system. That works really well, but the boat is ready to go when it shows up at the dealer's lot to be able to put that trolling motor on. One part of that, and I'm gonna get into here to this anchor locker real fast, is that we have a plug right in here in the anchor locker. And what's nice about that is we have this little notch going into the anchor locker. That's a great place for that line to run so you're not pinching the, the wire from the trolling motor. It comes back in here, it's tucked up under this lip right here. So that plug is completely out of the elements in there. A lot of times you'll have a plug on top of the deck. That's not a good place to put a trolling motor plug because you'll get salt water on it and rain and it's just constantly getting water on it and eventually that, that plug is going to corrode. Another thing we've done, a new enhancement on this boat, is this anchor locker. The previous 18 Redfisher did not have an anchor locker. This boat does. Um, you know, even with the, the new GPS systems and the anchor lock systems on the trolling motors and with the power poles and that kind of stuff, you still need an anchor, and it, not only for a safety precaution, but certainly there are times when an anchor comes in handy, whether fishing or just being at the sand bar or anything else. So it's really nice to have a dedicated storage area for an anchor, and this is what that is. You can option the boat out with what we call an anchor hanger, so you can screw that in. It'll actually sort of elevate your anchor up out of the way so it's not laying just on the inside of the hull in here, and then you have plenty of room for your road and chain and that sort of thing. You notice this lid comes up, stays up out of the way. It has those gym friction hatch hinges on it, which are really nice. That way you don't have to have a strap on the lid or a gas shock or anything like that to leave it up. That stuff just gets in the way and, and ultimately is just another thing that could possibly break. So one thing that's really important on any boat is 
storage. And, and you need more storage on a boat that's very versatile because you're going to be doing a bunch of different things in a, in a day. You need more kinds of tackle, you need more kinds of gear, that kind of stuff. So this boat does not skimp on storage at all. That's very important to us. See this big bow storage lid here, gas shock assisted so it comes up very easily. Once again, it has the friction hinges on it. You can see that the, the hinges are back nutted. Not only are they back nutted, but it is in addition, in the hinge or in the lid and on the deck, there are plates in there so that every time we put a screw through, we're going through a backing material. So you're not just going straight into fiberglass where eventually if you were to do that, those screws would wallow out, that fiberglass would give way and then those screws would start backing out. So not only do we have that plate in here, but we have the redundancy of the back nut uh, nutting here which does a really good job. You're never gonna have those screws back out. Also, you know, notice the nice underside of the lid. It's not just a painted gel or something like that. We use a, a special process of these lids that allow us to give the, the finish on both sides of the lid. So it gives a really nice looking finish here. Another thing about this, you have these big deep lid troughs, okay? This does an exceptional job of evacuating the water. If you're to get any water over the deck for some reason, it's gonna get collected in these lid troughs and it's gonna go right out of these big drains on the inner corner here. That then, those drains go right into the cockpit. So there's no place on this boat where you're gonna have water that goes into the bilge. It's a completely self-bailing boat. That means you can leave it in the water and you can have water come into it and it's gonna drain right out the sides of the boat and never go into the bilge, which is a, a really nice feature. This front storage box here is huge. It's goes this far all the way to the whole side. You can fit a ton of stuff up here. Um, so you have storage really close by. If you're fishing or something like that, you can grab your bag out really quickly. Go ahead and rig and be right up back on the bow fishing again. We'll close that up. You can see how that fits. It's a nice fitting lid there. Very smooth, okay. When I latch that down, that latch right there is called a compression latch. It pulls that lid tight against that gasket material you saw there. So that way, even if you have water, a whole bunch of water forward in here and it, it gets even up into those lid troughs, it's not gonna dump over underneath, between the lid and the gasket and get into that storage compartment. So it's very, very dry. So before I get off the front deck here where you'd be doing a lot of your fishing, I wanna talk about rod storage a little bit, especially as it pertains to under gunnel rod storage, okay? This boat has four tubes on either side going forward, okay, so you can put eight rods in these rod racks, okay, and have the tubes, uh, the tips protected up forward here. But it also has two tubes that go back, and so you can have rear-facing rods. And a lot of people really don't recognize the, the benefit of that. And there are a couple things. First off, it allows you to stagger the reels. You can have some rods going in the back of the boat forward with the reels back there and then you're going to have some rods up forward with the reels going back so you don't have reels on top of one another and they're not also sticking out into the passageway as you walk by. Another great benefit of it is it allows you quick access to a rod from the bow. So let's say you're fishing baby, baby, a jig or something like that under the surface and you see a topwater bite and you want to quickly grab a topwater rod, all you have to do is just step down and quickly pull it out like this, okay? So that's really nice, it's especially really nice with fly rods. If, if all rods go from the back forward, then you have to take three or four steps back and to get that rod back there. But this allows you to put rods facing both ways and allow quick access and put even more rods. So really, you have the eight rods that could go forward and you have the four rods that could go back with two tubes a piece. And you have plenty of rod storage that's all very accessible and is also gonna protect your gear. So now I'm gonna step into the cockpit. Before I do that, I'm gonna walk around a little bit and show you just how stable this boat is. If you see that, you don't see the boat uh, rocking back and forth a whole bunch. I'm walking on the gunnels. What that does is it allows you to use the full 711 a beam to move around the boat. So it's, even if you have four people in here, and that's what the capacity in the boat, you can move around everybody very easily because you can get up on these decks. Also makes it really nice if you're fighting a fi big fish that you need to move around the boat very fast as well. Okay, so as I step into the cockpit here, you can see that's an easy step. That's not too high, it's very uh, negotiable. You're not gonna have any awkward steps there, trip hazards or anything like that. We've put a new console on this boat. That's one of the en enhancements. And the console is a little wider, okay? So it's a little bigger. And what's nice about that is it gives you a bigger backrest here, 
which is super comfortable. That comes standard on the boat. As well, comes standard in the boat is this, cool, this cushion right here that sits on top of the Ingle 35 cooler. So this whole assembly is standard. It's very comfortable. Obviously, this, these coolers are super nice coolers, and you have enough capacity to fit a day's worth of lunch and drinks and all that kind of stuff. So plenty of uh, space there for the cooler. This cushion does remove, okay? It is bolted from the back side inside the console. You can get up under there. You can pull this cu cushion off if you'd like. It has an access hole back here to allow you to get to the back side of your electronics. The cushion is also has a gasket on the console itself. So it pushes right up, that cushion pushes right up against that console. So you're never gonna get any water in the console even if you have some water that gets down behind the cushion or anything like that. So I mentioned the new console. There are a number of great features on this, okay? The boat comes optional with this windshield and grab rail. And I'll talk about that more as I get behind the console. But what's really nice about this grab bar here is as you're walking back, obviously it's the first place you're gonna grab. And that's really nice. It keeps you nice and stable, comfortable as you're walking through the passageway here. But it also prevents you from grabbing onto the windshield itself, which obviously if you put too much pressure on this windshield, you could have a tendency to crack it. So the over the grab rail here works great. Um, you also have standard on the boat. The rod racks here, they're three d on each side, so you can have six more rods there. We have the battery charger that comes uh, optional on the boat as well. That would be a three bank, so you can charge everything, that 24 volt trolling motor system and your house battery, all right? Notice as I walk back, bunch of space there, very easy to navigate, okay? This console, like I said, um, does a number of things really well and is a great enhancement to the boat. As I mentioned before, it's a bit wider, okay? It's not so wide that it makes it hard to pass on either side of it, um, but it's wide enough that it gives you an, a lot of coverage behind it, so you're nice and out of elements. It's especially the case if you do opt for the windshield and grab rail. Standard on the boat would be a grab rail that stops about here and, and no windshield. But even in that uh, configuration, the console's still nice and wide enough to provide some break against the wind and the cold and that kind of thing. Another thing that's really nice about it is the fact that you have big space for electronics here. We have the Garmin on here right now, that's a, that, this nine inch, but you can put a 12 inch in here as well. So it allows you to fill up this whole space here. That was one of the things we really wanted to design in. A lot of people like that bigger unit. That would be especially beneficial for someone who is fishing a lot of passes and jetties that needs to read some, some bottom and that sort of thing. So this console will occupy that, the bigger garments there and the 12 inch. Another thing I like about it is how well laid out it is, okay? Everything is easy to see. Um, nothing is being really blocked by the steering wheel or the binnacle or anything like that. I have my Yamaha gauge down here. I have my used switch panel that's lighted when you have the nav lights on, the labels light up so you can see exactly what is what in the dark. It has these nice breakers on here so that if you have a breaker that pops, all you have to do is press a button and reset it. You're right back into action. Another thing that's really nice about it is just how everything is at hand's reach. I have my binnacle right here, my, my uh, steering wheel right here. This one is optioned out with an Edson steering wheel. You can do that in silver or, or black. Um, but when I push the throttle forward, I'm right on the trim tabs here, which is really nice. So I don't have to take my hand off the throttle at all. Actually, I can manipulate the trim tabs the same time I'm manipulating the throttle and doing the trim on the engine all at the same time. So I'm never removing my hand from anything. I can do a lot of manipulation to all that controls very easily. It's also the case here on the, on the wheel with this jack plate. The jack plate is an option on the boat. It comes with this blinker style switch, which is really nice because you can keep your hand on the wheel and you can move that switch up and down to adjust the jack plate. So I could be adjusting the jack plate, I could be adjusting the trim, I could be adjusting the trim tabs all at the same time. And that's why it's laid out like this, so you can do all that. And, and we boot use the boats all the time and we fish a ton and, and we're very particular about performance in boats. And so that's what goes into um, designing these boats and doing these layouts is that kind of stuff. This boat has a hydraulic tilt steering, that's an option. That's a nice feature obviously because you can adjust the steering wheel depending on your comfort if you're standing or sitting or that kind of thing. Another thing I like about this console uh, is this battery storage down here underneath. 
This door is very easy to remove. You can do it that way if you want to just quickly get something into the console, out of the console really fast, or you can pull it all the way out and slip it to the side to allow you easy access into those batteries. All three batteries will go into the console right here. Okay. It has plenty of space now that we've widened it up a little bit and it is a little bigger. So not only can the batteries fit over there, under there, but you can even put um, some gear in there as well. You could put a nice little Tupperware container in there with your keys or, and wallet and all that sort of pocket content stuff, cell phone that you want to be able to easily access. Another really nice design enhancement that we've done to the new Red Fisher 18 is we changed the cushions a little bit, okay? Not only have we widened this bitch cushion a good bit, but we've changed how it's, how it's attached, and I'll show you that in a second. But this boat is optioned out with our backrest right here, which is a very comfortable piece. We've also developed a new backrest slash step that's folding, that's integrated with the, the polling tower. And that'll fold down and it provides a great backrest as well. That's very comfortable. But in the layout of this boat, you can see how I can sit back, kick back here. This provides a great brace against my back. It's super comfortable. If you're running in chop or something like that, you can lean back and, and it's just really nice and makes for a soft ride. Well, one thing we've done is we've changed how these cushions go up. Now I have, since I have the backrest in here and that can be removed, I can only lid, open the lid to this point degree. But the important thing is, is that how the cushion comes up with the lid, okay? Previously, what happened was the cushion was strapped down here, basically, okay? And to f move that lid up to get into this back storage compartment, you had to move that cushion out of the way. So essentially, you had to fold the cushion in front of you, which meant that you had to step back, fold the cushion down, it's now here in front of you, and you had to reach over everything to get down into the lid. Not only was that cumbersome, just didn't make for the, the best setup, but also you had the, the attachment points for the cushion here that were a, almost a bit of a hassle. So in this particular case, with having that cushion right on the lid, everything comes up in one fell swoop, okay? You can access your, your back area here really easily. This is a huge back hatch that goes all the way from side to side, so it's monstrous, so you can never have enough uh, gear to fill it all. But it still has a nice and wide opening, so it's easy to access this stuff, easy to find what's in there. This cushion, now, just because it's on the lid doesn't mean you can't remove it. it it's attached with a, a peg system that allows you to take the cushion off if you want to, when you store the boat or leave it outside or something like that. And you can store that in the garage or indoors. But all you have to do is go back and line up those pegs and put that down. This is a really, really nice enhancement here. Let's secure that latch back down. You can do that easily without having to move that cushion. That's another nice part of it. All right. And this backrest is nice. Like I said, it does encumber that uh, being able to open that lid all the way, all the way. So you could, if you want a backrest, you could opt for that option that comes off the tower, but it's, it doesn't encumber anything else on the back end of the boat. Okay. So you still have access back to these back storage areas. All right. So this is an optional release well here. You can leave it at, not as a uh, release well. You can, if standard, the boat comes just with dry storage here. But if you do do a release well there, it's 23 gallons, I believe, somewhere in there. If you do do a release well here, you can still shut the water off so you can still use it as dry storage. This box and the centerline live well, which is standard, are both insulated. But this box, if you tend to do want to use it as a release well, is big enough corner to corner at 28 inches that it can easily fit a tournament winning redfish or big snook or anything like that. So it's plenty big enough if you are a tournament person to be able to bring that fish back to the weigh-in. It's also plenty big enough that if you like chumming or something like that, that you could fill both these wells very easily um, with enough chum to last the full day. And it's nice to have a second well as well so that you can segregate your baits if you want to. Some blades don't play well together. It's also nice, you know, if you're not going to overload a well to, be, to use both wells so that you make sure that all the baits have all the adequate aeration they need. There's a little different plumbing system in this boat than the older pl plumbing system. We've uh, done some dra new drains here that allow you to moderate the water flow so you can really get the perfect balance of inflow and outflow. You're not going to have overflow issues or anything like that. So the new plumbing system in the live wells works really, really well. Once again, you have the, the uh, friction hinges there so the lids stay up out of the way. Okay, you see that one? I set that down there. Here you have 
this center line live well, that's standard on the boat, okay, nice and blue, that keeps the bait nice and calm. Once again, it has that new drain system in it and, and inflow system that works really, really well. It's nice and big, so even if you don't opt for the release well or you're just deciding not to use it and you want to put um, gear in there, it's big enough, this well, to easily take big 12-inch, 13-inch mullet if you're tarpon fishing, something like that. Um, or you can just fill it with a bunch of white bait. Like I said, the capacity is big enough um, that it can do that for a day's worth of chumming, no problem. Comes with a standard live well light in it. There's also standard under gunnel lighting as well. The compartments have lights in it as well, the standard. All right, we close that up. Moving back here to another storage box. This box has more storage room in it. Also, it's a dedicated spot for your power pole pump, also for your fuel water separator. So keeps those out of the elements, but still keeps them nice and easily accessible. The boat can be optioned out with either an, either uh, power pole, eight foot power poles on either side or duals, and both your pumps are gonna go here in here. So like I said before, they're easy to work on, um, but they're completely out of the elements. So just more good storage. This storage is very, very dry. Like I talked about before, if you were to take a wave over the back or something like that, the water's gonna come in here, it's gonna get in this trough system, and it's gonna drain out of the back of the boat. So you're not gonna get any of your stuff wet or anything like that. All right, we'll close that up. So the, po the pulling towers are optional on the boat. Um, each pulling tower, or foot here for the pulling towers, get mounted through metal plates in the deck, okay? As I mentioned before, any place we're putting a, through, a screw through that deck, we're gonna have some kind of backing material. In this particular case for the towers, there are metal plates in here. Those plates come standard on the boat, whether you're not, you get a platform, so you could add a platform later, no problem. All you have to do, do is drill and tap them, okay? We have this tower with this engine package. We have an F-150 on here and a jack plate, so that's, this is gonna be in the even taller tower package uh, to accommodate that bigger engine and that jack plate moving up and down. And then we have a smaller tower as well for that, the 115. We also are gonna have, like I said, that backrest option that comes off the tower that works really well. Not only is it backrest, but it's a great forward step that allows you to get on the step and come right up the, the front of the tower. It makes it very quick and you don't have to walk around the side of the boat. So as I mentioned before, the boat comes optioned with two engine packages. The F-115 SHO by Yamaha, really great engine, very torquey, quick engine. And then you have the 150. More often than not, we're gonna have people put the F-115. That's a great running package on this boat. The boat top end is in the neighborhood of the, the mid 40s, um, still almost or just over four miles per gallon, which is really great for that speed. And then if, if you were to look at it at cruise around 30 miles per hour, you're gonna get almost, uh, just over seven miles to the gallon. So really great fuel economy. The boat has a 31 gallon fuel cell. So you have a bunch of range. You're not gonna have to go by the, the um, gas station every time you go fishing because um, the great fuel economy and the size of the fuel cell. You can option it with the jack plate as this person has here. This would be more probably your tournament style setup. The boat's gonna be really, really fast with this setup. Uh, you know, depending on how you have it loaded and that kind of thing, you're likely to see in the, in the mid 50s. So, but the boat balances well with this. Um, it's still nice and shallow. Um, so a lot of people opt for this package if they're really hardcore fishermen that want to cover a whole lot of range or maybe in that tournament scenario where you need to get to a spot quickly, beat some other people and then get back to the weigh-in quickly as well. So between the two engine packages, you have a really nice economical package that's still pretty quick and then you have this great package that really can get you moving around very, very quickly with the F-150. Another really nice feature that we've added to the newer Hughes is the, is the ability to really color match everything. And we, we do that in a number of ways. Obviously, you can do the hull um, in two-tone. You can do the full hull, a particular gel coat color. We offer five standard colors. You can do, pick a custom color as well. You can do the console in any color you want. You can do two-tone to the deck, or you can do a single tone. So all the gel coat can be 
color match, which is a really nice feature. But in addition to that, you can also color match with the under gunnel C-deck pads here. We offer the gray and black, as you see here. Also, we offer a brown and black in that faux teak package. We also offer C-deck padding for the top of the tower top here in that gray and black, brown and black. And then also the boat can be optioned with a bow tower as well, and that can have that same C-deck pattern on it. So it's all optioned together. Color match looks really, really nice. So on a boat this size, you have a limited amount of real estate, and so everything is always a trade-off. But one thing we never want to trade off is access to your bilge pumps and things you're going to have to maintain, your live wells, that sort of stuff. So that's access to this back hatch here. Okay, Nice wide opening. It's very easy to get down here. You stick your head in there. You can see everything very easily. Everything's within arm's reach. You can see down there how, every, how clean everything is with the live well set up, all that sort of thing. Every through hole below the water line is going to have a seacock on it. So that way you can go ahead and shut that water out if there's any kind of breach upstream or anything like that. That also allows you to keep the wells dry like I was talking about earlier. So you can use them as dry storage. But it's really important to be able to get to that stuff easily so you can easily maintain it. All the wire harnesses are made in-house. They're made not only to the, the specific model, but they're made to your boat's order. So if you have something particular in your boat, it's going to be strung in that wiring harness. All the ends on either, uh, all the wires on either end are labeled so you know exactly what wire goes where. They're all, all copper tinned, so it's only the best wire you can buy. And they all have Deutsch connectors, so it's a plug and play system. Those Deutsch connectors are watertight so that you can plug into, let's say, your live well pump. If you have something go down on the live well pump, all you have to do is shut off that seacock valve, pull that pump off, unsnap the Deutsch connector, put another, another pump in, um, go ahead and plug in that Deutsch connector and then turn that seacock back on and you're in business. So you can see we've taken the 18 Hughes Redfisher, which as I said, has been super popular, probably considered one of the most popular flats boats of all time and certainly one of the most versatile. And we've only enhanced it. We've only made it better. We've made it better by adding in that anchor locker. We've made it better by changing the style of the console and making it a little bigger to allow you to put all the batteries underneath and still put the and have the big 12 inch unit up here and have the nice coverage behind it. We've enhanced the boat by changing up that cushion package and, and doing the cushion that stays with the lid as you lift it so you're not having to go through the hassle of moving the cushion out of the way to get to the latch to open the lid. We've also enhanced it with the, some different options in terms of that backrest and footstep up to the tower. The boat has come a long, long ways. It's still the exceptional hues that it's always been known for, had the incredible construction, all the backing materials, all the 316 stainless steel. The boat does everything super well in terms of being very versatile. You can fish it in a bunch of different places. You can bass fish out of it very easily. We have a bunch of people who use the boats for that. You can put bass seat plates on the decks so you can do the swivel seats. Obviously those can be removed very easily so that then you can tra transition in. You can pole it. You can fish mangrove shorelines and deeper water with a trolling motor you can fish inlets and passes and then out on the beach. So it's a super versatile boat that's only been made, or made better by those enhancements, including that Varus construction. So the boat is only going to be stronger and even better constructed than it has been before. So you need to do yourself a favor and, and check out this new Hughes Redfisher 18. You can go to Hughes.com and look at the dealer locator and type in your zip code there. And that, that way you'll find where your nearest Hughes dealer is. You can go check these boats out get on one, run it, feel how stable it is. And I think you're really, really gonna like it.